What's up, everybody? So the UFC has announced that Khalil Roundtree Jr. is getting his first huge opportunity at light heavyweight to take on, yeah, Jamal Hill. Yes, sweet dreaming it up, Jamal Hill, man. The guy that just got knocked out about a week ago at UFC 300, who's been making all sorts of excuses. We've seen Chael Sonnen. We've seen Daniel Cormier. We've seen all these different guys make excuses for Jamal Hill for why he lost. We're not going to discuss that in this video. We are going to discuss, one, why I think this matchup was made, and two, what I think about Jamal Hill coming back from, you know, literally getting knocked out about a week ago to now fighting in essentially two months versus a guy like Khalil Roundtree. Now, first, I want to pump, the, I want everyone to pump the brakes a little bit, right? I am a big, I, I like watching Khalil Roundtree fight, man. I'm a big advocate for Muay Thai and MMA. And when you bring someone to the table in terms of who has some of the best Muay Thai and all of mixed martial arts, Khalil Roundtree's name tends to ring a bell. That is a name that pops up and should be considered in the top five in all of MMA. He has beautiful Muay Thai technique. But you can't get caught up in the fanciness of the Muay Thai because when we look at the record of Khalil Roundtree, which I will throw up right now on the screen for you, we're going to take a look at his past eight to nine fights, ladies and gentlemen. So first, we'll start with the loss to Johnny Walker. He got KO'd. Then he fights Eric Anders, my guy. He gets a he gets a decision win over Eric Anders. Loses to Kudalaba. He got finished. Loses to Marcin Procnia. Loses by decision. Then he goes on a three, five fight win streak here. Now, something to factor in with Khalil Roundtree is, yes, this guy is incredibly dangerous and he has had some ups and downs where he's moved around weight classes and this and that. And he seems to have found a home at 205 pounds inside the UFC. But when I look at this record of Khalil Roundtree, I see, I see Dak Prescott stats here, man. I see, I'm getting Dak Prescott vibes here. That's what I, that's what I see. And if you're not a football guy, Kind of just those empty calorie stats late in games where it's like, oh, Dak threw for 400 yards and it's like, yeah, he threw for 350 in the fourth quarter. Like, the, and, and the Cowboys lost as usual, right? I mean, that, that's what I'm looking at here in Khalil Roundtree's resume. It's not to hate on the guy. I like Khalil Roundtree and I think he's an outstanding fighter and I will be rooting for him to win this fight because I enjoy watching him fight. But what I don't like is just because Jamal Hill comes off of a loss here, we're all of a sudden going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. He's coming back too soon. There's no chance. There's no this. There's no that. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you, actually, the guy that knocked him out, Alex Pereira, he got brutally KO'd by Ezra Adesanya. After that fight, not long after, he decided he was going to go up to light heavyweight and take on Jan Blachowicz. And this was literally a few months after getting knocked out. And there were a lot of people criticizing that, saying, this doesn't make any sense. This is crazy. His career is going to be over. Why would he do this? He's heading into a trap. This is dumb. He needs a new team and all these different things. The bottom line is this. We saw Lex come back and look relatively pretty good. I mean, not the way he's kind of filled out into his lightweight frame now, but he looked pretty good against Jan Blachowicz. The chin was refreshed. All these different things. And I understand the circumstances are a little bit different because it's not like Jamal Hill's now going to heavyweight here. He's staying at light heavy. But if I'm in Jamal Hill's camp, I really like the decision to go ahead and book another matchup. And I know that this may get a little bit of criticism here, which is fine. You know, go ahead and comment your opinion below. If I'm a coach and I'm sitting back and I'm even Jamal Hill, I'm looking at this saying, hey man, listen, I, I had an Achilles tear. I was out for an extended period of time. I come back and I just didn't go in there against some guy, man. You, he like went in there against one of the scariest strikers the light heavyweight division's ever seen, who's been kind of just running through everybody, has beaten everybody he's fought outside of Izzy the second time in, uh, in MMA. And now you're in a position where you can sit on that loss to Pedeta, which is pretty disappointing considering Hill kind of had the spotlight for 300. It's not the performance he expected, right? He goes out there, maybe gets embarrassed. So he feels a little bit embarrassed, right? I, I mean, it is what it is. It's Poetan, man. The guy's a high level striker. If you're going to stand and bang with the guy, you're going to, you have a very high level chance of getting knocked out. So no harm, no foul. I love this decision to get Jamal Hill back in there and sooner rather than later. I understand that he was knocked out by a left hook. If this fight would have played out to where, you know, he's just getting beat to a pulp, his legs are getting banged up, he's taking body kicks, he's getting rung around, he's getting dropped, he's getting back up, and this thing goes into the later rounds and then he loses, then I don't like this at all because I'm like, okay, well, that's a quick turnaround. 
But we have to look at this in a little bit of a different fashion. Jamal Hill, yes, he was KO'd. And we have some questions when guys come back from being knocked out. Like, are they going to be the same guy? Are they going to be hesitant? Are they going to open up the way maybe, you know, we, we have um, have seen them in the past? And if I'm going to be honest, like, no harm. I like Jamal Hill. I think he's a good fighter. We didn't really get to see him open up at all, right? The fight was over before it even began. It really wasn't a fight. He was just getting his legs beat up. He landed a good right hook on Pereira. Fair play there. But outside of that, he was just getting set up from the get-go. And then the whole, hold on, Herb, let me cook, gets clipped with the left hand, and people are saying he lost focus, all these different... You got to be locked in in there, man. You know what I mean? But when we look at this, I think Jamal Hill getting back in there, it's going to be good for the confidence. I think it's going to be good for the confidence. The guy's just coming off of a camp. He just had a fight. Big moment, UFC 300. Shook the rust off a little bit, right? Kind of getting the feel of, of making that walk, getting back in there, fight week, big moment, all this different kind of stuff. Then he's going to get to go in there with a guy where he's not going to have to worry about the takedowns at all. So it's not like they said, oh, you know, Jamal, you lost, man. Let's give Yank alive. You know what I mean? Like it's they could have did that, but they're not going to do that. So they gave him a guy in Khalil Roundtree who, like I've said, I praised him in the beginning, man, has outstanding Muay Thai and he's vicious. He's ferocious. The problem with Khalil is it seems like it takes him a while to get going, right? With some of those Thai guys, they kind of bounce and they kind of, you know, approach you and they kind of... They like to have a very like, you know, Thai guys, if you ever watch them spar, it's very like, okay, I go, you go, I go, you go. And they have very, very fun sparring to watch. And even when they fight, they're very, you know, aggressive and very fun to watch. But from what we've seen from Khalil in his last outings, you go out there and you finish Anthony Smith, right? And, and it comes in the third round and it's like, okay, you know, you were doing pretty good this and that. But at this point in the career of Anthony Smith, it's like, well... Anthony Smith has been losing a lot recently, right? Okay, so when we look at that and we look at that win there, I think we need to take a little bit, we need to take a little bit of a back step, okay? Then when we look at Chris Dawkins, Chris Dawkins, not even in the UFC, man. I don't even think he's in the UFC anymore. And if he is, you know, whatever, but I I, I haven't heard his name in a while, right? The Dawkins brothers, like, okay. Then we look at Dustin Jacoby. That age well. To sit, split decision over Dustin Jacoby, high level kickboxer, fault and glory, all these different things. I thought Dustin Jacoby could have won the fight. I thought it was very close. It wasn't like this was some sort of where Khalil Roundtree is running through people, but I'm not going to go back through the resume. The point is this yes, Khalil Roundtree is very entertaining. He is outstanding. He's dangerous. He is ferocious. But Jamal Hill is going to be counted out of this fight for, for a reason that doesn't make sense, guys. Like he was in there against the most. Other, him and Izzy, Alex Pineda and Israel Adesanya are ahead of everybody in terms of the striking. They are operating at a different level in terms of the IQ. Everything is high level technique and setups. Like people just overlook that every time. And then you're going to compare because Jamal Hill just got knocked out. You're going to say, oh, he's going to get finished by this guy Khalil Roundtree here. Now, I'm not saying Khalil can't go in there and get this thing done. And it's probably going to be three rounds, I would assume. It's going to be at UFC 303 on International Fight Week. I can't remember if I said that. But the point is, this is going to be a good fight. This is a good matchup. I like that Jamal Hill's getting a comeback. He's not going to just be able to sit around and pout until, you know, people are talking about in the November, December time frame, take some time. The guy was just out for an extended period of time for an Achilles injury. Let's get back on the high horse. Let's get back into a camp and be like, flush that down the drain. Here we go. Focus on Khalil Roundtree, who we know is coming into this. He has really good striking. The man is vicious. He's ferocious. We need to be ready. But the good news is we really don't have to worry about takedowns or anything like that. We're coming in here and this is going to be a kickboxing fight. So if I'm Jamal Hill, I'm approaching this thing with utter confidence knowing that I was just in there with Alex Pineda. This guy ain't Alex, man. You know what I mean? Khalil Roundtree is dangerous. He's a very different fighter. But I think Jamal Hill is going to have a much better outing this time. I'm not going to make a pick yet, but I will say this. Do not write off Jamal Hill. I understand he just got KO'd, but talk, we're talking about Alex here. We're talking about a high-level kickboxer. Now, in terms of what I think the UFC sees here in a matchup like this, right? We always have to... The reason I waited to make this video, there's always a time when a fight gets announced and everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa Hill's back too soon. He's back too soon. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? And I sit there and I go... Yeah, but why? Why is he back so soon, right? It, it, it's, is it because, well, oh, we just want to get back in there. We want to get back on our high horse and kind of flush that down the drain. That could be, like I've said. 
But then why is Khalil Roundtree the opponent? Right? Why? It could have been anybody. It could have been, they could have said, let's give you Yuri Jamal. Let's give you, you know, Yuri saying that he's ready to fight Poetan at 301. So Yuri's ready. That's a matchup that I think everybody would like to see. I know Rakic took some damage, so he's not really available. We have Jan Blahovic. We have some different names out there. But yet they go with Khalil Roundtree. If I, would, if I had to guess, this has something to do with the UFC 1 is giving Jamal Hill an opportunity. Look, man, we know you're coming off an Achilles injury. You came you came in there. You didn't have the best showing against Alex. Go out there. Take care of business against a dangerous guy who's riding a five-fight win streak in Khalil Roundtree, who has really good striking. We're going to give you a guy to go in there. Go in there. Knock him out. And then you put yourself right back in discussion to possibly get another, another title opportunity. And you might say, whoa, 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 why? Because the light heavyweight division is so thin that Jamal Hill, depending on how things play out in the division... He's one crazy win away over Khalil Roundtree from possibly being again in line for a title shot considering he was a former champ and he was coming off an injury and fights poets on like all these different things. And then the UFC can market the excuses and, and, and all those different things that everybody's making for Hill right now. But then if Khalil Roundtree wins, whoa, whoa, whoa. We now have this guy that's violent. You know, he looks scary. The dude's built like a brick. He's got nasty Muay Thai technique. He's ferocious. He's finishing people. He's got good striking. Huh. Maybe we throw him in there with Alex Pineda. We give Alex a guy that's going to stand and strike with him. That has, you know, fun striking that people are going to want to tune into. We're going to see a highlight. We're going to see a kickboxing fight inside the octagon. Because if I'm the UFC, when you look at Magomed Ankalaev, one, Dana White, I don't think is a huge fan of Magomed, but we're now at the point where they are trying to figure out how to continue to push Alex Pineda to the top because he's already he's already up there, man. Now, the issues are, if you're looking at it, you're like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. The war, the scariest matchup is Ankalaev. We all know that. So if I'm the UFC and Jamal Hill goes out there and KOs Khalil Roundtree or Khalil Roundtree KOs Jamal Hill, is the UFC not going to sit there and go, whoa, someone just had a crazy performance you know, at International Fight Week. They're making a case here to get in there and get an opportunity against Alex Pineda, especially if Khalil Roundtree can go in there, take care of business, and finish Jamal Hill, which I think there's definitely a shot at doing. I don't know, man. I'll leave that one up to you. I'll, I'll throw my poll up to see what people are saying thus far. But I, uh, if you like this or if you enjoyed this video, like this video, comment your early prediction below. Are you riding with Hill? Are you riding with Khalil Roundtree? Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I appreciate you all. See you next time.